Our first live view example is this simple light controller. Yeah, it starts off with a brightness of 10%, and then we can turn it off, or we could turn it on, Whoop. or we can adjust the brightness down wherever we want it, or back up a little bit again. It's basically a glorified counter, but it's a great way to get our feet wet with live view. So in this example, the entire page here is a live view, and we get to it by browsing to slash light. You can also embed live views in regular Phoenix templates, like maybe to have part of a page be a live view. But for now, let's just jump into some code and build this one. We're in the Live View Studio Phoenix app directory, and we're gonna start in this branch one button clicks begin. And let's start on our router. And if we scroll down here, we see that it already has a Live View route to the Phoenix welcome page. Now this was generated as part of generating the app. We wanna add a new live route for our light controller. So to do that, we use the live macro. The path is gonna be slash light. And then we give it the live view module to use. In this case, it's gonna be light live. So a request to slash light gets routed directly to this module, which isn't a Phoenix controller. Rather, it's a long running live view process. So let's go ahead and define that module. We'll save our router. And then by convention, live view modules live in the live directory that's under live view studio web. Here's that live directory. And then you notice there's this page live module that was generated for the welcome page, but we want to create our own module. So let's go ahead and define that. It's going to be lightlive.ex and then define our module. It's going to be live view studio web and then light live. And then we're going to use live view studio web live view, just like that. And that's going to pull in all the stuff we need to be able to create a live view. So let's start with the mount callback, since that's the first one that's invoked. It's automatically called when the request comes in through the router. Yeah, and it takes three arguments. The first one is params, and that's a map containing the current query parameters, as well as any router parameters. Now, we don't need those for this example, so we're just gonna ignore them. And then the second argument is session, and it contains private session data, and we don't need that either. So we'll ignore it. Finally, it takes the live views socket, which is a struct, and we do need this one. We need to assign the initial state of the live view process to this socket. And we do that by using the assign function. It takes the socket as the first argument, and then any key value pairs to assign to that socket. Well, let's say that we want the light to initially be set to a warm glow of 10% brightness. So then our key will be brightness, and the value will be 10. Now we just have one key value pair here, but if we had multiple key value pairs, we could pass in a keyword list, and we'll see an example of that later. Yeah, and this assign function returns an updated socket, so we'll say socket equals there, and then mount needs to return a tuple okay with that socket, just like that. Now you'll often see this inlined like this. Just take this assign, drop it here, and then we can get rid of this line. And you know that assign returns a socket, and we need the socket as the second element of the tuple, so this works but I'm gonna leave this on a separate line for now, just so it's more clear what's going on. Now we said that this socket here is just a struct. Well, what does that struct look like exactly? Well, let's inspect it and we'll do it right after we assign the brightness, IO inspect, and we'll give it the socket. Save that away. Now, if we hop over to our browser and we go to slash light, well, it says render wasn't implemented. That's no big deal. We'll get to that in a minute. But if we hop over to the server log and you scroll up past this big, ugly error message right here, you'll see the socket struct, Phoenix Live View Socket. And notice it has an assigns field, which is a map, and it includes a brightness key with a value of 10. And a couple other things that Live View includes by default. We'll refer to this as the socket's assigns map. So the assign function sets the brightness value in the assigns map and flags the value is changed in the changed map. So the assigns map is where all the live view state is stored. Okay, so back in our live view module, we'll remove IO inspect, and then we need to define the render function, which will render a new view. Render, and it takes a single argument, assigns, which is just that map that we saw in the socket struct. It contains the state we've assigned to the socket. And this render function needs to return some rendered content. And for now, we'll inline a live view template using a special sigil. It's tilde L. We'll give it three quotes and end it with three quotes. 
We could put this template code in a separate file, and we'll see how to do that a bit later. But for this example, we'll just co-locate the template right here because it's relatively short. So let's start by just rendering the brightness value. Sure, let's start with an H1. We'll just say front porch light. And then to interpolate the current value of brightness, we're gonna use an EEX tag. And since in mount, we used a sign to set an initial value for brightness in this socket, down in our EEX tag, we can refer to that brightness using at brightness. So this is just gonna interpolate the current value of brightness into the template. So now if we hop back into the browser, we see that the brightness is set to initial value of 10. So when our app receives an HTTP request for the live route, the mount function is called, which assigns the live view's initial state, in our case, brightness of 10. Then render is called to render static HTML that includes values assigned to the socket. Now granted, this UI is kind of boring, so let's dress it up a little bit. And to save you the headache of watching us type CSS, we've already included some CSS in the app. Yeah, we'll trigger that CSS using some divs. So we're gonna start off with a div with an ID of light. And then inside of there, we're gonna have a div with a class of meter, that's gonna be our light meter. And then we're gonna have a span with a style that has a width, and we want that width to be the same value as our brightness. So let me grab this. Clean this up a little bit. Up here, our width is gonna be the value of brightness, and we want it to be a percent. And we also wanna show the brightness inside of that meter. So we're gonna do brightness and then put a percent again. We'll save that away. This reloads. Ah, now that looks much better. So now let's make this interactive. Let's add two buttons, one to turn the light on and one to turn it off. Those buttons are part of the view, so we'll do that in the render function. Let's just give ourselves some extra space here, move that to the top. And then underneath the meter, we'll put a button and it'll have an image and it's gonna be images light off.svg. And you'll find that image and the other images we're gonna use in the assets images directory. So then we need an on button image and it's gonna be images light on.svg. Okay, good, got our two buttons over here. And then when a button is clicked, well, we need to send an event to our light light process to update the light state. To do that, we'll start with the off button up here and we're gonna add a special HTML attribute, phx-click, and this is unique to Live View. And then its value is the name of the event to send. In this case, it's gonna be off. Live View refers to the PHX click attribute and other attributes like it that we'll see a little bit later as a binding. It binds a click event to the button. So when it's clicked, an off event is sent via the WebSocket to the light live process. And similarly, the on button should send an on event. So we'll use PHX click equals on. And then to handle those inbound events, we need to define handle event callbacks. Yeah, we'll do that right down here. Name of the function is handle event and it takes three arguments. The first is the name of the event. We wanna handle the on event. The second is some metadata related to the event, which we don't care about. And then the third is the socket, which remember has the current state of our live view process assigned to it. Okay, then what should happen? Well, we wanna set the brightness value to 100. Yeah, so we just use the assign function again. We're gonna to assign to that socket a brightness of 100 that returns a socket like that, and then we'll return, in this case, it's not okay, it's no reply, and then the socket. Now, whenever a live view state changes, in our case, brightness has changed from 10 to 100, the render function is automatically called to render a new view with the newly updated state. What's unique is it doesn't send the whole view back to the client. Instead, live view automatically tracks changes, and it only sends the changes to the client over the web socket. So now we're handling the on event right there. If we save this away, come back over here, turn the light on. There we go, goes all the way up to 100%. So now we just need to handle the off event. And to do that, I'm just gonna copy this handler right here. And we'll just paste it down here. The name of the event is off. And in that case, we wanna set the brightness to zero. Save that away, reload so we can turn it on and turn it off again. And we've got some CSS animations behind the scenes that make this all smooth. Now that we've got the hang of this, let's add a couple more buttons to dim the lights up and down. 
and that's going to introduce us to something new. So I'm just going to copy this button here, put it between these two. This one's going to send a down event, and we've got an image down.svg, and we'll copy that one. And this one's going to send an up event and up.svg. And then we need to handle these two inbound events, and we're going to start with up. So just come down here. I'm going to copy on. And the name of the event is up. And then in this one, we want to bump the brightness by 10 each time the button is clicked. So to do that, we need to access the current brightness value. Yeah, to get that current brightness value, we can use socket.assigns that returns the assigns map and then access the value of the brightness key, dot brightness. And then we'll just bump it up by 10. So we've calculated a new brightness value and then we just need to make sure to use that here to assign the new value to the socket. And doing it this way will work, but there's a shortcut. When updating a value, we can use the update function rather than the assign function. We can get rid of this line now. And then update takes a function right here, and I'm gonna use an anonymous function. And to create that anonymous function, we'll use the shorthand capture syntax. And the function receives the current keys value. In this case, it's gonna be the brightness value. So that's ampersand one which represents the first argument to the function. And then we just need to return the updated value. So we're just gonna bump that value by 10. So we're gonna update the brightness value by running this function. Give that a save. Come back over here, hit the up arrow. Nope, oh, we're going up 20, 30, 40, and so on. Then we need an event handler to dim the lights. And let's just copy the up handler. Sure, we'll put it right down here. We'll change the event to down. And then we just need to knock 10 off the current brightness value. So instead of plus, we just use minus there. Save that away, and we should be able to crank the brightness up. There we go. And dial it back down a little bit. Perfect. So stepping back and looking at what we've done, mount initializes the state of the live view process by assigning values to the socket. Render renders a view with a brightness, gets interpolated right here and also in our span, and then it has four buttons. And we have a handle event callback for each inbound event. On, up, down, and off. They change the state of the socket using either assign or update. And whenever the state changes, render is automatically called to render a new view for the updated state. So it's a pretty simple programming model, all written in Elixir, not one line of custom JavaScript. But there's more going on behind the scenes than meets the eye. And we'll look at the life cycle of a live view in more detail next.